I think it was really disgusting that a lot of the comments that were made were classifying uh, my partner as a pimp. And, um, you know, this is why I got Colin in board in the conversation online. Uh, just to answer it for himself. And I think you did some really great answers. Yes, it's frustrating because uh, clearly everyone uh, seems to think that that someone in the sex industry is incapable of having a normal, loving relationship, which we've very, very much got. Mm. And um, I was taken aback by a lot of the comments. But one thing that I did do is I kept uh, fishing because I, people would say, are you happy with it? And I'd go, on the whole, I am. But there's one or two things that I'm not happy about. And as yet, nobody has actually had the, the gumption to say, well, what aren't you happy about? Because I'm waiting. What aren't you happy well, exactly. about? Exactly. <laughs> well, I'm waiting for them to, to ask me that so that I can then go, well, I'm not happy that she's not treated the same as a normal person in a normal job. The fact that she has no protection in place in her in her work. Um, and I'd like to see more legislation to help sex workers in the industry uh, yeah, and also right. to get rid of the stigma mm. that's that's kind of carried around with it. It's And I referred to my job role um Charlotte's very happy in her role. I'm not overly happy in my job. So does that make me trafficked? Because I'm a builder. I'm not happy with that. Does that make me someone who's put upon or someone who's, you know. Um, and, and also, I've said that as a builder, I've given my body physically to the building industry for 30 years. But I'm also a writer. And as a writer, I've given my soul. Does that make me... Um, a form of a prostitute because I've, you know, I've obviously devalued myself. Yourself. Mm. I think that it's just really upsetting that we're, we're in the 21st century and people aren't seeing other he fellow human beings as equals. And as far as I'm concerned, if anybody thinks that they're worth more than somebody else, then they're no longer human. And that's where the problem arises, is that when somebody thinks that they're better than somebody else, just, uh, just because of their job choices, I think that's really shameful. It's also very easy to go along with the, the media hype and propaganda. And a lot of, a lot of these people are uh, mirroring images that they've been told or opinions that they've been told because they haven't had the opportunity to go out there and speak to people within the industry. Uh, arguably, there is a small percentage in the in industry that has issues. But um, like any industry, got, we've yeah, all got issues yeah. within every single industry. The problem is, is that people, I, I don't understand, it's not the fact that we're trying to normalise it, it's the sense that we're trying to establish a fact that we are human beings, we have rights just like everybody else to be safe at work, and rather than having all this stigmatisation around it and creating further marginalisation, we need to be looking at the bigger picture, and that's all about safety. The comments that's been put on to this video from the BBC Three is a perfect example of why we need uh, decriminalisation. We need to be able to have exit strategies in place for people who want to get out of the industry. We need to have procedures in place to protect workers. And this is what it's all about. It's by it's by getting rid of the marginalisation. It's by getting rid of the stigmatisation and seeing each worker as a human being and protecting their human rights to be safe at work, just like everybody else.